Hello! In this video, um, we're going to go and look at the uh, APT power car. Um, this is one that we got from eBay. As you can see here, um, there has been some damage and it is a, um, a non-runner. So uh, we're going to do a quick teardown. Uh, so you can see how do you take apart the motor and we're going to clean it. Uh, so some of the tools that we have today is um, we have a water bottle that we've uh, cut in half and it contains, uh, as you can see there, a small amount of rubbing alcohol. Uh, we also have a set of X8466 uh, springs and carbon brushes. Uh, we also have this uh, American Gugon, it's, uh, but any kind of cleaning solution should work. And if you're interested in getting Gugon, um, you can uh, put some comments in and maybe we can work something out to get it shipped over to you if you're interested in it. It's uh, very good stuff, not only for uh, cleaning parts, but also for uh, motors and uh, track cleaning. And we also have some uh, Q-tips uh, to help clean some of the smaller parts. So, um, first of all, the APT power car has a couple of small clips right here. And basically, the best way to do this is to uh, just squeeze on it and let it pop. So, we're going to move the rubbing alcohol over there. And we're just going to squeeze in like that and pop the end off on that side. As you can see, the ends pop off on the APT. They go back on pretty easily. Like so. And so it's pretty basic. It's uh, your average kind of uh, top there. And you have your ring field motor and it's uh, wire for the, for the pickups. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, disconnect this wire. And you see, it uh, looks like it's in pretty good shape. Now this uh, item we got on eBay from uh, Rails of Sheffield. Um, it did run initially, uh, not very well. It was losing power as, uh, as the motor goes down along the track. It probably did two or three loops of our uh, test track, and, and then it stopped working. Now uh, the guys at Rails of Sheffield did sell it as a non-runner. And needing some work, so it's not in too bad a shape. So hopefully, we'll won't take much to get this uh, fixed. And looks like probably a clean and probably replace the uh, the brushes on it, and we should be good to go. So um, on this particular model, uh, you're going to need to get these parts underneath the plastic, and it's easier to work with this part here to get the motor out. So just uh, it's a little fiddly, but just push it down like that, and out it comes and you're left with the bogey so we're going to leave that there. So this is your standard ring field motor. It's got this extra bit on the top for the uh, APT um, connector uh, for the uh, pantograph and uh, it's to be pretty simple to, uh, to take apart. And so the first thing we're going to do is uh, undo the screw here. and it comes out pretty easily. And unlike uh, some of the other models, this is actually made of metal. Uh, it's a pretty decent uh, model by Hornby considering it's uh, many years old, good 30 years old at this point. So at this point we're going to go and clean um, and dismantle this. So the next part we're going to do is uh, try to remove the axles here. Uh, hopefully they'll come off just like most of the other um, models. As you can see, it comes off pretty easily. And uh, what we're going to do, just so we don't mix things up, is we're going to connect these two together. And you can see it's pretty dirty. So what I'm going to do is take some of the glue gone. Yeah, if I can get past the child lock. And you're going to take a Q-tip and just dip that into the glue gone. And then we're just going to run it up and around. Thing it wheels like so. Let me move this back a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And glue gun is pretty harmless, and you can see there it's uh, pretty dirty. And then what we're going to do is I'm not going to worry about getting it too clean because we're going to go and take the uh, rubbing alcohol here. And we're just going to drop that straight into rubbing alcohol. And we do the same thing with the um, 
the theater bogey uh, later on. But for now, we're going to go and take the other axle off, like so. And it usually comes off pretty easily. And again, you can see it's it's pretty dirty. So take the other side. Now the goo gone actually evaporates pretty quickly. That's why I'm uh, closing the lid there in between uses. So here you can see, just rub it up and down, clean that off like so. Do the same thing on the other wheel. And this is a 70% rubbing alcohol, so it's um, going to be pretty okay to toss the uh, traction tires in there as well. It's not going to do anything to it. Okay, so once that's done, we're going to go and continue taking some of these parts apart. And what I actually have here is a uh, regular plastic container off a set of drawers. We're actually going to store the, um, the other pieces here. Now, these are plastic, so put that in there, but this is metal, so we'll toss that into the rubbing alcohol as well. So the next piece is the um, the motor itself. So we're going to take off all the plastic pieces, the brass piece here, and um, and try to get to the brushes and get this all cleaned up. So I'm going to undo the screw here to get the uh, the panograph connector removed. You see it comes off pretty easily. Now this too is plastic, so I'm not going to toss it on there. I'm just going to put it in there. The screw it up. It can go straight in there without any problems. In there without any problems. And so you can see it's just a regular ring field motor. So the next thing we're going to do is just uh, get this piece off. So slide that out like so. And it's metal, so toss it in here. And even though these are plastic, um, we're going to take these off, clean them with the uh, goo gone. And we're going to actually put these in separately just so we don't get them mixed up. So I know these are off the left hand side and these are off the right. And we're going to discard that since it's pretty dirty. Rub the gig on over like that, toss it in. Once again, we'll just rub the gig on over this, like so, and toss that in. As you can see, these things get pretty dirty pretty quickly. And we'll clean the other two um, later on. So now at this point, we want to get the um, brushes out. So the best way to do this is to actually split the motor. Um, there's a little connector here, so we're going to undo that very carefully. Make sure the wire is okay. And then it's actually slotted in place there pretty well. So we're just going to leave that one there. I don't think it needs to be taken apart. Now we're not going to drop the motor in here, so <laughs> we're doing just taking this apart to um, see what kind of condition it's in. Make see if the brushes actually need replaced or if it was just um, dirt. I'm going to probably hazard a guess that the brushes are going to need to be replaced. Now I'm going to be careful here because we don't want to lose springs in the brushes that are in here. So I'm just going to very carefully pry this open. We're going to go ahead and take that wire off just in case it was holding that in. 
There we go. See that wire that was holding it in? Spring and so on. So it's um, it's very very easy to use these things. Um, the springs don't look too bad. Um, I'll compare those to a set of new ones. They don't look like they're in too bad of shape. Um, Brushes though, I'm going to put those in there so we don't lose them. Yeah, the brushes look a little worn, not too bad, but we're going to go and um, go ahead and replace these, I think, just to be safe. So we're also going to go ahead and clean this. Um, I'm going to clean it with the um, rubbing alcohol though instead of the Gugon. We don't want any um, residue left on the um, on the Gugon. So I'm go ahead and just get some of the dirt. You can see there the dirt's coming straight off of it. It's just metal, so it's pretty safe to um, try to clean the surface as well. You can see it comes off pretty easily. We just don't want to get it too wet, so we're going to take an arc glue tip and just go over that. And notice I didn't use the um, the Gugon for this because the Gugon does leave a bit of a residue. Um, it does evaporate after a while, but we don't want um, it to get on any of this part. This part will actually pop out as well if you want to, but I'm going to go ahead and just leave it in there. Um, the rest of the surface looks pretty clean. We're just going to spin that around. You can see, after many, many years, <clears throat> it gets um, pretty dirty. I'm going to go ahead and take an arc Q tip and just dry that off. Since we're here, we're going to go clean the other side as well, just for good measure. And once again, you can see I'm using the rubbing alcohol and not the cleaning solution. Rubbing alcohol does a pretty good job. And once again, we're just going to go ahead and dry that off. And so that's the one half of the motor. It's looking a good bit cleaner than it was a few minutes ago. And then we're just going to go ahead and clean this as well. And you can see where the um, the brushes and the springs are supposed to go. Um, you can bend these out a little bit um, to remove the brushes and springs, but I don't like to do that because it weakens this, and this is easy to break if you, um, especially with the older models. Uh, if, you know, if it's 30, 20, 30 year, years old, you really don't want to um, risk breaking any of this stuff. Um, especially if you live in here in the states, because it's a lot harder to get this stuff. Make a mistake and you don't have it here, you're looking at at least two weeks before you're going to see a part. Yeah, let's dry that up again. Yeah. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let's set this aside and let it dry. Um, what I'm going to do is remove the um, gears here from the right hand side. Let those dry. I'm going to take the gears from the left hand side. I'm going to do the same Gugon treatment. So we'll reopen the Gugon. And um, just go ahead and clean these off. Pop those in there. Okay, we'll let that float for a while. And while it's doing that, we're going to go ahead and clean the other half of the bogey. So, I'm going to remove the wire completely. Again, you're just going to um, Push this out. Like I said, it can be a little tricky. You're gonna gotta get it right there in the corner and lever it out. Again, it's a screw, and of course this time it's a different kind of screw. So, um, so I've been flathead. It's a Phillips. So we're gonna go and take a Phillips screwdriver. Open that up like so. We're gonna let that fall out. I'm going to separate this, uh, since they, aside from the screw being different, um, the other piece looks pretty familiar, so we're going to go put that there so we don't mix them up. And then the bogey comes apart just like that. Once again, this is metal, so since this is metal, we're going to go ahead and clean this with the Goo Gone um, in a little bit, along with the other one. And again, it's a similar procedure, so very much like the, uh, the HST bogeys. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just pry this open. Yeah, we'd have to use the right screwdriver. We have is this is kind of old, so it may not want to cooperate. So here you can see it really doesn't want to come out. And that part's not supposed to go through. So what we're going to do rather than breaking it, we're just going to toss the whole bogey just like it is into the rubbing alcohol. You might have this happen. Um, for some reason, this part's coming apart from here. And I don't really want to break it, um, since it's not an easy part to find. Um, so we're just going to go and toss it straight there into the rubbing alcohol. We use enough rubbing alcohol that's submerged, so it's all good. Okay, so while it's sitting there, um, I'm going to take the boog on and uh, turn off the chassis part of the bogey here. Uh, the nice stuff about Gigon is it's not going to take the um, the paint off, so we can safely do this without any worries.
I'll just let that dry and we'll wipe that off with a paper towel or a piece of kitchen towel later on. All right, so um, we're gonna let that sit for a little while and then we'll we'll come back and reassemble it after I wash my hands. All right. Okay, so um, now what we're gonna do is uh, dry off some of these parts. So I'm gonna take the parts that we took out earlier from the um, right hand side. Dry this off and you can see the, um, they were pretty dirty. So that's off the right hand side. So we just reassemble everything here. Okay, so we're just going to take the pieces out of the rubbing alcohol one by one. So you see here, it's a pretty, pretty big difference between them. Um, what was put in there. Is that all shiny and clean? I just remember when you um, when you do clean things this way, you do have to re-lubricate them because all the oil that was on them has now um, come off. So we only need to um, to re-lubricate them so there's not any problems. So there's the uh, other boogie. I'm gonna take the parts from the left hand side. See, it was uh, pretty dirty. Now, one thing you will see is sometimes the copper will change color with the rubbing alcohol. Um, that's not something you need to worry about. And it still work just as well. And, uh, in our case, I hope it works a lot better. <laughs> um, as it didn't run at all. Separate them out to dry, get all the dirt off. Come back out. So, and I'm gonna leave the um, screw, two screws left in there for now. Um, actually, we I need the pine for one. So I'll we'll just take them both out. I was gonna leave them in there, but it's all right. And as you can see, the so, if you can see that on the camera, but it's uh, gone from being a clear color to a kind of a brown color. If I uh, tilt it like that, you can see there's all sorts of dirt and stuff floating in it. So, we'll pop that over there. Dry these uh, screws off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other bogey. I'm just going to um, dump that in there. Swish that around for a second. Just need a, a whole lot, just enough to get it wet. And we'll just dry that off. Like so. So now we have all these parts, and this is where I hope I remember how to put it back together. Um, 
I'm not going to reuse the springs. I'm going to use uh, two new springs. So very carefully take these two springs out. Make sure they're not going anywhere. Yeah, you can see they're extremely sensitive to um, bouncing around. And we get two new carbon brushes. Carbon brushes are a little harder to lose, but you can still lose them. And the carbon brushes get mounted into the spring, <laughs> so I thought I lost it. Um, like so, I don't know if it's easy to see this on the camera, but as you can see, the spring there, the carbon brush has one end. Um, it would be easier to do this way. Carbon brush has one end that's uh, a little thinner. And so you take the spring very carefully and uh, it gets inserted into the other end like so. So, yeah, there you go. So we're going to go ahead and reassemble this. So the way I do this is I try not to squeeze the spring. Um, I'm going to put these one spring in like that, another spring in like so. So you see it, you got the uh, two springs like that. And take the new carbon brush, make sure it's the right way around. This is extremely tricky to do. See that? Oh, there's one. And there's two. And I'm going to take this part of the motor, line it up on both sides. You can see just like that. And very carefully, and try to push it together. Yeah, you can see there what's happened is the carbon brushes come out. So we have to try again. And there we go, we got it. So, next thing to do is just to make sure that it's in there. And it looks good. So, the next thing we're going to do is just uh, flick it around and reinstall the left and right. So 
the um, smaller wheel there goes on the inside and then the little wheel on there Just clip into place and then you just do a quick test and then look this way to make sure that your carbon brushes haven't gone anywhere and then next thing we're going to do is just leverage this in this will usually require a screwdriver So you're going to need to just leverage in like that, it clips in place, and we're good to go. So we've let this uh, dry for a couple of hours, and as you can see, we've uh, successfully clipped the um, piece in here. It actually um, needs a screwdriver in order to just get it under that lip and in those two holes. So um, the next thing I'm going to do um, is uh, just go ahead and uh, reassemble the wheels here. So these pop off. Uh, you put it through the side without the gears. Like so. And then you take the side with the gears and clip it in there and just give it a quick spin, make sure it uh, works okay. And then do the same thing with the other side. So pop those out, put that in the correct hole, take the um, other wheel with the gears. Make sure it goes in properly, and then uh, just give it a quick spin. As you can see there, as I spin the wheel, it turns the gears. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is um, put the uh, pantograph adapter back on. And the pantograph adapter fits on this way. Luckily it's uh, keyed, so it's um, pretty straightforward. And the um, we just put in with this little screw. So we're gonna drop that back in there. Take the uh, small screwdriver and just make sure it's properly lined up, holding it in position, and just tighten that up. Like so. It's uh, not going anywhere. Okay, so finally we're going to take the um, wire here, and this wire was connected in here. There is a um, little place for it right there, and it needs to catch on that piece like that. So it just slides on. In fact, there's a piece of Looks like some kind of insulation right there next to it. So we're going to push that down so it doesn't catch on it. Slide that back on like that. And then slide this piece right back on there. And just make sure it's not going to hit the gears. Bend that back a little bit and it's good to go. Gonna push that insulation back into place. Okay, so before we um, put it all back together in the boat in the um, chassis, uh, we're going to um, lubricate it because, as you know, we cleaned this all up real good, but it's um, gone and cleaned off all the oil that was on there as well. And we're going to use the um, 
liquid bearings synthetic lubricant. Um, it's pretty cheap. I got this on eBay for a couple of dollars. Um, just don't use 3-in-1. Um, this is a plastic safe oil. And um, so if you got any of the plastic parts, it's not going to um, break down the, um, the paint or the, the plastic on it. So in order to do this, um, we're going to go get one other tool. So what we've got here is basically your average um, bottle lid. It's been uh, washed out. This is from a bottle of water. And what we're going to do is we're just going to pour a small amount of synthetic oil in there. So take this and then just a couple of drops. Close that up. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot in there. And it's probably way too much for this anyway. And what we're going to do is take the screwdriver, just dab the screwdriver, and then you're going to just touch right there, just enough to get it wet. Probably just go ahead and make sure you get that real good. And then what I usually do is get a Q-tip or a piece of um, and just dab it to get any excess off, like so. Um, you could also lubricate the axles here, um, but I didn't bother doing that. Okay, so the next piece we're going to um, put it back in the um, in the bogey, and this should be pretty straightforward. It should just drop um, straight in. Hopefully, so you just have to um, wiggle it in there a little bit. Take the um, screwdriver, make sure it's level, and um, looks like it does go in there. It's a little, it's a little bit off, but and then we're gonna take this and the screw. So. actually completes the boogie like this so I'm gonna put the screw in first just wipe it off since let's turn it a few times go ahead and take this piece And so this piece here goes in just like that. So we're going to take it and slide it in under the screw. Take the um, Kirk screwdriver and just put my thumb under there. Just tighten that back up. We have to. Loosen it just a little to keep it straight and then tighten it. And so there we go. That's the um, APT motor rebuilt. So let's go and take the other bogey and drop it back into the apparatus here. That one goes in a little bit easier. And it's uh, basically the same thing with this. So if you remember, the screw was a um, Phillips head, so oops. If you can see that on the so hole right there, I'm just gonna drop the screw. It's a little tricky to do this when your fingers are covered in oil. But 
and it goes a couple of turns. Then we take the same apparatus. It's just a cover. You have to loosen it a little bit. So my thumbs under there. Fits in pretty well. Straighten it up so it looks straight. And um, go ahead and tighten it as much as it will. It's not going to go anywhere. Okay, so now it's time to reassemble the bogey. So we just put that in like that, grab this corner, and hopefully it'll just pop into place. Yeah, just like that. So that's the first one. We take the motor bogey and we drop it into place. So put that side in, like so. Let's hold that over. And then just gonna get it in the corner like that. And now the last thing we have left to do is to hook up the wire again. So this end here goes into the chassis, just like on the HSTs. And this end connects to the other side of the motor. Like so. And there you have it. So now we're going to go run this on the test track and see if it works.